Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to the webinar series for parents parenting tips. Today we are going to talk about how to help kids develop a growth mindset. First of all, I would like to define what is a growth mindset. The concept of growth mindset was developed first by psychologist Carol Dweck and popularized in her book, Mindset, The New Psychology of Success. And she defines a growth mindset as a self-perception or self-theory people hold about themselves. Let's watch a short video about growth mindset. Do you know this guy? Need some hints? As a kid, he struggled with school. He dropped out of college after only six months and for money would return Coke bottles for five cent refunds. Okay, one more. He helped found a company called Apple. You see, Steve Jobs wasn't born rich or a genius, but he did have a growth mindset. Simply put, a growth mindset means that with effort, you can train your brain to get smarter. That's right. Scientists have learned that the human brain acts a lot like a muscle, and using your brain can actually cause it to grow and even get heavier. You see, when you learn new things, tiny connections in the brain multiply and get stronger. The more you challenge your mind to learn, the more brain cells you grow leading to a stronger, smarter brain. As a result, things that once seemed hard actually become easier. People with a growth mindset know that it takes effort to train your brain. Start by exploring new information. Learning something new can be scary, and you might get frustrated, but it's only because you haven't yet made the connections your brain needs. It's up to you to take charge. Repeat, repeat, repeat. Just like exercising your body, repeating an action builds strength. Read, write, or say something important at least five to 10 times to make it stick. Most importantly, don't give up. When something is hard, that's when you need more effort, not less, to build those connections in the brain. Say, here's one more. Do you know this person? Need a hint? the growth mindset, they can train their brain to become stronger and smarter. Do you know this guy? Okay. So, Going back to what Carol Dweck developed, she distinguished between a fixed mindset and a growth mindset in these five aspects, skills, challenges, effort, feedback, and setbacks. So regarding skills, usually when we have a fixed mindset, we think skills are innate and they cannot change. We either are born with the skills or not. On the other hand, if we have a growth mindset, we think that skills are a result of hard work and we can always improve. For a person with a fixed mindset, challenges are something to avoid. They will reveal lack of skill and usually they feel overwhelmed by challenges. While on the other side, challenges are something we want to embrace is the opportunity to change and calls for perseverance. Regarding effort, when we have a fixed mindset, we think it's not necessary and it's linked to being not good enough. When you don't make a lot of effort, you feel you don't have to do it. For a growth mindset, effort is essential and it leads to mastery. Regarding feedback, on the fixed mindset side, it produces defensiveness and we tend to take it personal. On the side of a growth mindset, feedback is something useful and positive. We welcome feedback and it identify areas of improvement. And last but not least, when facing setbacks, 
if we are in a fixed mindset, we blame others, it's not my fault, it's yours, and it's easily discouraging. If we have a growth mindset, setbacks are opportunities to learn from and focus on making changes. Why is it important to develop a growth mindset? First of all, it helps you overcome obstacles when learning something new. When we are learning a skill and think about your kids, when kids are learning a skill, there's a lot of obstacles. When they're learning to crawl or walk, they might fall or bump into things and they do have a growth mindset and they keep trying until they finally accomplish that skill. The second one is that it uplifts your self-esteem which won't be significantly affected by events. When we have a growth mindset, things can happen, obstacles, setbacks, and it won't affect the appreciation that we have to ourselves. And also it makes it more likely to develop your full potential because you know that with effort and the appropriate strategies, you can improve in any skill you would like to develop. What strategies can be used to help kids develop a growth mindset? And here I'm going to share some of the main traits of a growth mindset and also how they help kids to develop it. So the first thing is that the brain is like a muscle and you can talk to your kids about it often because when we practice a skill or an activity, we exercise our brain it makes more connections, it builds more connections between the brain cells or neurons, and then it becomes stronger. So when we try challenges, when children try challenges, they exercise the brain, make new connections and learn and improve and get smarter. And this is something you can talk with your children on a daily basis. The second one is the magic of mistakes. Usually, some of us tend to see mistakes as something bad. You know, we feel embarrassed when we make a mistake. We don't want to accept in front of others. It makes us feel uncomfortable to make mistakes. But according to the growth mindset approach, mistakes have some magic. First of all, when we make mistakes, it is scientifically proved that our brain activity increases, making more and more connections between our neurons. So it creates, and it creates new connections because you have some information in your brain and then new information is coming, creating all this network of knowledge and expertise. We also have choices when we make mistakes. We, some people, give up. They say, you know what? I made a mistake. I don't want to keep going with this. I don't want to keep trying. This is a fixed mindset, but others can choose to keep trying and working hard, change the strategies until they learn the skill or improve, which is the growth mindset choice. And then the magic is that mistakes are opportunities to learn and also steps to build something new. So it is very important that at your home, you reinforce this to your children and to yourself because they learn from you. So if you take your own mistakes as opportunities for learning, they will learn from you. The third one is the incredible power of yet. And this is something that Carol Dreck shared in her TED talk, which is the opposition between two um, ways to mindsets. The first one is the tyranny of now. I can't do this. If you fail or if you make a mistake right now and you have a fixed mindset, you are trapped in the tyranny of now. You say, I'm only focusing on my result right now. I can't do this and I will, will never learn. On the other side, when you add the word yet, everything changes. This is the power of yet. If you fail now, if you're not able to do something now, you can do it later on. So if we add the word yet at the end of these sentences, the meaning is completely different. Instead of saying, I can do this, 
you say, I can't do this yet, but I will learn how to do it in the future. The fourth is praise the process. This means that we need to praise wisely and mindfully. We do not praise our children for abilities such as intelligence or a specific talent, because this, once again, sends the message that, well, you are smart, you have this talent, you were born with it, but every time they fail, their self-esteem might be affected. Instead, we praise the process, the steps that your child took to get to the end result. And here are some important aspects of praise. The first one is, yes, we praise effort and hard work, but sometimes effort and hard work is not enough to accomplish your goal, okay? So if we only praise effort and hard work, if they fail, they're gonna become very frustrated. So it is important to praise effort and hard work, but also the strategies they use or the steps they took to get to the end results. It is also very important to praise perseverance in any task they're doing. And the fifth, encourage to take challenges. Challenges are the activities that will help us develop a growth mindset. Challenges empower us to try new things and help us keep growing. If we don't challenge ourselves, we're going to stay in the same level and we will never grow. And I would like to share a quote that I really like from Henry Ford. And it is, if you think you can do a thing or think you can't do a thing, you're right. So it's all about the mindset. Deep within, if you think you can do something, you fail right now, but you are sure that you can improve in a skill, then you're right. But if you have a fixed mindset, if you are trapped in the tyranny of now, you say, I can do this, and you are right as well. So I would like to read a message or an example of how you can share this with your children. And it's like a growth mindset in a nutshell. So here I go. Everyone in the world has a way of perceiving things. We call this a mindset. You have a mindset, your friends have a mindset, and your teacher has a mindset. We can choose to look at the world in a way that makes us feel strong and happy or in a way that makes us feel frustrated and weak. People with a growth mindset know they can get better by working hard and trying different strategies. They keep trying even when things are tough and they say things such as, I can't do this yet, or mistakes help me learn. People with fixed mindset feel differently as if they are stuck with the way things are. A fixed mindset happens to anyone at some point or another, but it's important we choose to have a growth mindset, keep trying and stick with challenges. And there's something really important here. And it means that we are not going to be always on the side of a growth mindset, but if we stay aware of our own behaviors and choices and thoughts, then it's more likely that we move from a fixed mindset to a growth mindset. So in our website, in the Med Counselor's website, we have uploaded two very important resources. Um, this is an article that is called Growth Mindset, What You Need to Know as Parents, and how can you um, implement some strategies at home to develop a growth mindset in your children? And the other one is um, Developing a Growth Mindset with Carl Dweck. She is um, the psychologist who use this term for the first time and this is her TED talk. So now we have questions and answers if there's anyone who would like to ask a question. Ms. Roxana, I, I would just like to add that one thing that I, I've noticed sometimes with some parents and it and it's a perfect way, I think, to teach about growth mindset is when our children 
for example, are enrolled in an in um, extracurricular activities or outside classes of either art or dance or music. And they've tried it for a couple of days and then they decide no more, I don't like it. And as parents, we say, okay, fine, let's move on to something else. I think that's the perfect time. And I've seen it happen over and over again, that the perfect situation where we can talk to our children and say, look, let's try to finish something that we started. Let's try to take on this challenge. Let's see if try it for more, you know, a couple more days or weeks, um, or let's finish the course. And then you can decide whether you like it or not. I think that would be a great opportunity um, to teach about growth mindset and not giving up. Exactly. And actually, I think a very good question in a situation like that is, why are we allowing our children to stop this activity? Is it because they don't like it and they are you know, reluctant to participate or because it's difficult for us to deal with this frustration or, you know, manage a situation where they can get easily frustrated. But yes, I totally agree with you. And like any opportunity in which our children become frustrated about something could be a learning opportunity or a learning experience. And maybe they, they won't continue, but as you said, they might uh, set a goal of finishing um, something that they already started. Ms. Batista is also here. I don't know if she would like to add something. Um, I would like to connect this topic with uh, the one that we were discussing last week, struggles that make kids stronger. Uh, I think that as parents, it's important to provide opportunities for children to learn from mistakes. And last week we were saying one of those uh, struggle, struggles is to allow kids to make mistakes, to allow kids to maybe even, you know, fail as a, a, in a homework or in an assignment. So, you know, it, to, to let them experience the opportunity of failure, even though it sounds kind of terrible, but at the end, it's a great opportunity to learn. So uh, if you want to know more about, about that, about those struggles, and you didn't have a chance that, uh, to attend last week, uh, the materials are uploaded at the counselor's website for, for referral, for reference, sorry. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. And it's not like we're going to set our children to failure, but, you know, failure is part of life or making mistakes is, is part of life. And the difference is our mindset and how we approach those mistakes as a setback or, you know, something that will make us feel uncomfortable or will impact our self-esteem or as an opportunity to learn something new, to find new strategies, to change our choices, to make new choices. So... Yeah, that's totally, I mean, they're, they're um, last week's topic and this one are very related. So I really recommend that you watch the TED Talk and there's also her book if you want to read more about it. And she actually made, Carol Dweck, she made studies on students and how they um, responded to failure in tests. So, and she compared, okay, some of the students were saying, wow, this was challenging. I thought this experience was going to be more informative. And then there was another group of students who were really disappointed and frustrated. And she found out that the mindset was a key factor that determined the difference between uh, the students' responses. So one question that she asked in the video is, are you raising your children to, you know, have a success or a successful career or grades, you know, in their test for the, for the results that they can have in the moment, or you are raising your children to a bigger purpose, to dream big, to know that they can make mistakes and improve their mistakes and do something for the society maybe. So I really recommend that you go to that uh, resource and look for any other resources that are available on, online about Carol Dweck and um, 
is very interesting and she talks a lot about of children and students so i really recommend those resources so next and week uh -huh. is, Roxana, sorry to interrupt for young learners uh there is a resource that I, I use with with well i use with my students too but but especially it's enjoyed by third graders because it's uh, from Class Dojo. They have a series of videos uh, about Mojo, who is a friendly monster that develops growth mindset. And it goes through five chapters teaching kids uh, how to learn from mistakes. So it's, a, it's an amazing resource uh, to learn a little bit more about growth mindset with, with uh, younger children. Yes, totally. And actually, I use those videos. Nice that you mentioned because I use those videos in my um, counseling sessions with students. And I was inspired by those videos to create the titles of this webinar. So one of the videos is called Your Brain is Like a Muscle, which was uh, one of the strategies we suggested. The other one was, um, you know, the magic in mistakes and then the power of yet. So we can also share those resources with you and you will see that each one of these videos is related to one, um, to one slide of information that we share here today. There's another video, the fourth video is about neurons and how your neurons connect all the information that you had in your memory with new information. And then the last video is how the main character, Mojo, which is like a really cool monster, um, you know, connects all the learning that he has throughout the story about what is growth mindset and how growth mindset will help him, um, you know, reach her goals or achieve his dreams. So yes, thank you very much. We can also share that with you. So next week, Ms. Batista is gonna share a similar information for parents from third to fifth grade. And if you didn't have the chance to join this meeting, you can always go to our YouTube channel and check the video there. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining us today and have a nice afternoon.